Okay, if you just got your first ever Mac, I know it can feel like stepping into a whole new world. But don't panic because I've got the perfect map to guide us through this world. We'll go on a quick journey through five levels, each one more advanced than the last. And through them, you'll see that using a Mac is easier than you ever thought possible. Starting very basic with the six elements that make up the Mac desktop. You see, on any other PC, you're used to each app having its own menu. On a Mac though, we've got one single menu bar that sticks to the top of the screen. The point being, when we switch from one app to another, the menu items also switch to match the app we're in. Though there's one lazy menu item that never changes, the Apple menu. Think of it as your system control base, where you can shut down or restart your Mac, force quit buggy apps, or quickly launch the settings. But that's just the left half of the menu bar. What's even more interesting is this status bar on the right, where we can check things like battery level, Wi-Fi connection, or date and time. There's more of this in the control center, where we can pause and skip audio, change sound outputs, or connect to Bluetooth devices. The point being, we can tweak most quick settings right from here. Plus, all this is very customizable. We can hold down the command key and drag out any control to pin it to the menu bar. What's more, in the settings app, under control center, we can add even more stuff like a toggle for low power mode, a Shazam button or the current weather conditions. Very neat. Oh, and before I forget, clicking the date and time gets up the notification center with, you might have guessed it, recent app notifications plus a space for widgets, which we can add or remove right from here. Next up, the dock. This one's packed with features you might not expect. For starters, the launch pad shows all your installed apps and we can drag any to the dock to pin them for quicker access. Next, out of the box, we've already got the downloads folder in the dock. But here's the thing, we can pin any document or folder to this right hand side. Any document we click will open, but any folder we click will expand. Pro tip, right click a folder and pick how you'd like to view it, so as a grid, fan or list. But it's just getting better, because we can grab any file and drop it onto any pinned folder to move it into that folder. Plus, the same thing works with apps. Drop a photo onto the Photos app to import it, or a PDF onto Mail to directly attach it to a new email. Okay, perfect, we've done the basics. Now, let's move over to level two, window management, because that's where most new Mac users start questioning their life choices. And it starts with this. Clicking the red button closes your current window. Great but it doesn't quit the app, meaning it still runs in the background and we can still open a new window of that app from the menu bar. To actually quit an app, we can choose quit from the menu bar or press command Q. But sometimes you might just want to keep an app out of sight. So just for instance, when you're vibing to your favorite album, but don't want the music app taking over your desktop, hit the yellow button or press command M to minimize it into the dock. We can also make an app invisible by choosing hide in the menu bar or pressing command H. To get it back, click it in the dock. Click the green button to throw a window into full screen. This hides the dock and menu bar, which you can bring back by moving your cursor to the top or bottom of the screen. Click the green button again to exit. But notice something? This desktop looks a little too perfect. Yeah, that looks more realistic. Welcome to level three, app multitasking. For starters, the keyboard shortcut command tab is the fastest way to switch between apps. Hold command, press tab to cycle through all your open apps. Let go on one and you land there. Once you're in an app, you might have two or more windows of it open. You can switch between those by again holding down command and pressing the tilde key to cycle through the windows. To see each and every open window at a glance, press F3 or swipe up with three fingers on a trackpad. That's mission control and it's basically what you get with task view on a Windows PC. Oh, and speaking of which, if you liked snapping your windows on Windows, you can do that too on Mac. Just drag any app to any corner or edge of the screen. Pro tip, you can snap even faster if you hold down the option key while dragging. But let's stop for a sec. If you want something even simpler than all this to organize your windows, I'd recommend Stage Manager. It's hidden in the control center and lines up all your open windows on one side 
and puts whatever you're working on front and center. The point is that you can focus on one thing at a time on a clean desktop while still having an overview of all your open apps. And the best part, all the multitasking features still work. Now, we'll get to some special Mac features like Apple Intelligence, Time Machine and Spotlight Search in a sec, but before, we need to complete the final level. It's simple, hmm. each new Mac is born with your very own custom user folder, named after your user account. It's split into stuff like pictures, downloads and documents. That's the place where most people then go on and create their own folder paths to save their stuff to. Though, if you want to sync your files with iCloud, you want to create your folders in, you might have guessed it, the cloud. In any folder, there are four simple options to view your files. Up in the toolbar, we can toggle between icon, list, column and gallery view. If this is your first time using a Mac, I'd recommend the column view as it shows you the folder structure and lets you drag files around easily. That being said, you can open as many finer windows as you like with Command and N and then drag and drop stuff between them. Now the finder is good out of the box, but it could be better. So here are six quick tweaks in 60 seconds. Like when in list view, pressing command and plus gets us a more spaced out overview of all files. Or going up to the view menu, we can add a path bar to finder to see exactly how deep we're into a folder. Heading to the finder settings, you can choose what folder the finder opens up to. By default, that's your recently added files, but many prefer the downloads or documents folder. Plus under sidebar, we can uncheck any folders you don't want to see in your favorites, here on the left. On the same note, drag and drop any folder into the sidebar to pin it there for quicker access. And back to the view menu, you'll also find the option to add a tab bar. So just like in a web browser, you can use multiple tabs instead of windows, and we can easily drag and drop files between different tabs. But the desktop, window management, a file browser, we know that from any PC. So let's talk about the secret sauce of macOS, the five features that make the Mac more or less unique and that most Mac users never take full advantage of. Starting with AI, because Apple intelligence is now baked into every new Mac. Here are the three most useful features. Hold down the dictation key to speak or double press the command key to type to Siri. I mostly use Siri to create reminders or play and control my music. Plus, it now comes with native ChatGPT support. So what this means is that it can answer any of your weird questions and even generate images for you. We find more ChatGPT in Apple's writing tools. You can get them up in any app, in any text field, with just a right click and compose stuff like an email from scratch. But it's kind of funny that my most used feature is the least advertised one. In the control center, you find a new reduce interruptions focus. It uses AI to filter out all distracting notifications while letting important ones through. The point being, I can focus with that peace of mind, I won't miss anything urgent. Well, only to realize 10 hours later, no one texted me anyways. I've covered all the new AI features in a separate video. You'll find it in the pinned comment. Now, have you met Spotlight Search? It lets you find any file, app or piece of information on your Mac and beyond with one single keyboard shortcut, command and space. I mean, just for instance, you can use it to quickly open apps, documents, search for text within documents or look for emails and notes. What's more, we can quickly toggle specific settings or get unit and currency conversions. Plus, pro tip, type in any question and hit Command B to directly open a Google search in your browser. Your Mac has a baked in time machine so you can recover any deleted files. You just need an external SSD, connect it to your Mac and in settings, under general, you can set it up as a backup disk. From now on, whenever connected to your Mac, it will copy your entire disk. Think of it as taking regular snapshots of your computer. At any time, you can then browse the backups in this time travel interface and see the finder exactly as it was on any day. And most importantly, restore any deleted file. 
If you're paying for a password manager right now, you might want to cancel your membership because the Mac comes with its own passwords app. It natively detects password fields, recommends a strong password and saves it to the app. What's more, for any account that supports it, you can generate a two-factor authentication code. And it gets better because in the app settings, we can choose to pin passwords to the menu bar, which is the fastest way to copy any password or username with a few clicks. But nothing we've covered so far is as game-changing as the MacBook's trackpad. If you're only using it to click and scroll, you're barely scratching the surface. Let me show you. First, you can swipe up with three fingers to see all your open windows. If you're using an app in full screen mode, simply swipe left or right with three fingers to switch between the app and your desktop. Swipe with two fingers from the very right edge of your trackpad to slide out the notification center we've talked about earlier. In Google Chrome or Safari, you can simply swipe right with two fingers to go back to the previous website and kind of grab the trackpad with all five fingers to get up the launchpad. Plus, in the settings app under trackpad, let's make two quick tweaks. First, activate tap to click so you don't have to fully press the trackpad down for every click. Second, let's bump up the tracking speed, meaning how fast your cursor moves, because by default it's slow as f Now, if you're coming from a Windows PC, you might still miss features like cutting files with Ctrl X, a snipping tool to snap screenshots, or the simple .exe files to install apps. Good news is, you can have all this on Mac too, and you find out how in this video. I'll see you there, thank you so much for watching, and have an amazing day.